7,195 pounds. Rear Kitchen Super Slide Conquest coming in here at Haylet RV Brokers of Coldwater, Michigan. Just a mile down the street from our sister store, Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And uh, basically, this camper looks like it just didn't get used a lot. The folks had a camper previously, traded into this one, and then I don't know the exact details why, they just didn't get a chance to go out and camp as much as they wanted and said, you know what? We don't need to hold on to this thing for another year. Why don't we call those folks down at Haylet's, let them sell it for us, and when we get back to being ready to camp, we'll come see them again. I've always personally been a fan of rear kitchens because the whole thing looks and feels like it has opposing slides without having opposing slides, largely due to that giant campsite overlook bay window that we just had a peek at there, which means we've got opposing breeze windows over here on the other side of the trailer. I also like the little accent color wall that they have going on the slide. Uh, the exterior, well, interior, exterior wall? You know what I mean. That wall over there with the windows in it is, <laughs> is a uh, accent colored wall. Just kind of makes the whole thing look and feel a little bit bigger. You know, the color contrast. They did a good job of that here. That is an airbed style hide bed I've been in this industry long enough. I actually watched those things come and go. They're not really used in the industry anymore today because unfortunately the suppliers to the RV industry kept trying to find ways to find a dollar cheaper air mattress. So usually those things just ended up not working. The good news is that for about 20 bucks in Amazon, you can get yourself a new air bed if you are interested in having guest sleeping capacity. Similarly, the dinette can fold down for guest sleeping. Not to mention the fact that that's a fully free floating table. So if you want to take the table over here by the uh, re, uh, rocking chairs or even take it outside, you could. Storage below the seating right there is really just where it starts because one of the other good things about rear kitchens is that pound for pound, I don't know that there's something else uh, in a similar size and category that can usually have more storage and prep space. Starting back here, I like that double kitchen window, whether it's the back or the campsite. You get good airflow, good views of your destination. Also, that set of power outlets right between them, ideal for a coffee maker back in that corner. Uh, all the cabinets here you can see, not really dinged up, not really scarred up, because they weren't really used up a whole heck of a lot. And the way that they have this extra chunk of cabinet space here, it's very unconventional in comparison to most rear kitchen travel trailers. You don't tend to see it a lot. Little countertop extension right there if you need that extra little leaf of space. And for big stuff, you can see whether it's below that peninsula or the oven, you have room there. Now, we kind of saw a little glance at them previously, but as I pivot around, you can see these dual rocking chairs. These are not recliners, mind you. That word recliner often gets used in non-recliner applications. These are just floating rocking chairs, but that's the good news. You want to swap them out, put something else in, you easily could. Huge picture window overlooking your campsite. One of my favorite aspects of this floor plan right here. This was made before people were expecting 40-inch TVs to be the minimum standard and everything. So maybe, I don't know, what is that, like a 26-inch RCA over there? It's very modest, but you can see that there is room. I bet you could put a 32 in that, no sweat, maybe a little bit bigger without having to get cute and do any sort of modifying. Um, just giving us a quick look around here real quick. We will jump our way up to the hallway and bathroom area because, uh, again, unconventionally, if you look at the hallway here, you can see how it's got like a six inch deep cabinet from uh, where the door, entry door stops all the way up to where the bedroom door starts. So that is a nice chunk of extra, whether you're going to use this for overflow pantry space, uh, linen storage, pots and pans, well, and pots and pans probably wouldn't fit in there, would they? Not deep enough. You get the idea. Cans of soup, perhaps. There's plenty of things that you could work into that. Well, across from there, as we come into the bathroom, this is one of the reasons I like to put these videos together, because this is one of these uh, things that a still photo has a hard time capturing. The huge linen cabinet capacity directly in the bathroom. You don't have to go traipsing your halfway naked butt outside and doing the nudist camp streak if you forget a towel. And that corner sink, again, not industry standard, but it gives you some good counter space. There's actually some really good things going on here. The bedroom area is simple, but effective. It does what it needs to. It doesn't do any more than it has to, and that's pretty normal in this class and category. Uh, you might have noticed on the right-hand side, which is not currently in view, the hanging closet goes all the way down, whereas over here on the left-hand side, it's open. 
So if somebody feels a little bit claustrophobic, they'll want to sleep on that side of the bed or if they need a CPAP machine or something. Whereas if you want the extra long hanging space, you have that on the right hand side, which is what you see. And of course, there is storage below the bed. That is a camp queen. I suppose you do have room for a true queen in here. It'll make it a little tight getting around the bed. So you just have to kind of budget. Is it more comfortable to have to scoot around the bed or uh, to have your feet hang off the bed if you're taller like me? What's funny though, I'm tall. And I still wouldn't mind a short camp queen like this because I sleep on my side and I curl up. So a long bed doesn't do me any good. Um, also, you can see the little clasp right here. This is a sliding pocket privacy door for the bedroom, not just a curtain. The exterior, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But again, gets the job done. I did notice, and you can barely see it over the top of the camper from here, previous owners did add some Max Air uh, roof vent covers uh, on top of their air vents to, you know, give you some anytime airflow there. That's also kind of handy sometimes in storage, although you got to be careful of your humidity uh, control when you're in a situation like that. Um, power tongue jack on the front. It looks like that power jack was probably added after market. We are not the original selling dealer of this brand, uh, so maybe they had a cream colored power tongue jack you know housing I'm, I'm not sure just it seems like it was added on but it also doesn't look bad with the generally tan and white color scheme that we have going on here pretty good pass through storage compartment it does kind of jump around the bed a little bit but there's still more than enough uh capacity there i think what they found is they were able to give you a little bit more interior pass through well not pass through but interior storage space while still having uh, you know, an exterior pass-through right there. The underbelly is enclosed. Uh, again, not being the original selling dealer of this, I do not know if the belly of this is heated at the time of this filming. I'm going to have to do some research and see if I can locate that. And if you're curious, all you got to do is give our team here at Halid RV a call, uh, and uh, we can probably get that checked out for you. The rear area here looks about like everything else. It looks like it spent more of its time in storage and less of its time actually being used. The roof is walkable, by the way. This has conventional, uh, well, I would say conventional, but I don't know that's really the convention anymore, but it has plywood roof and floor decking, which are perfectly fine. Um, a lot of things nowadays, like all of our new campers within this class and category at Halo RV would actually have plywood floor decking. But uh, plywood roof decking is one of those things that's exceptionally uncommon. It's exclusive in this class almost only to the Jayco's that we carry, the J-Flight series. That is a manual awning, by the way. This is one of the last years where you saw uh, those being used in any level of frequency on a full eight foot wide trailer. Almost, it's like one of those things you can almost assume uh, a trailer has a, uh, a power awning nowadays. But that is a big patio awning. And I like how that entry door is buried right in the middle of it so that uh, if it is kind of a drizzly day, again, it's not an opposing slide living room, but with that door being right in the middle of a huge, I don't know, 20 foot-ish awning, something like that, you could easily spend some time outside unless it's really raining pretty hard. One of the cool things about a manual awning is you can tilt them more aggressively and you can stake them down to the ground more aggressively. I'm not saying you should ever leave this out in a windy scenario, I know some people do, I never ever recommend it, but I'm saying that you can have it out in more aggressive weather than a conventional power awning without really worrying about damaging it. Overall, I think if what you're looking for is like you're getting rid of the family bunkhouse or you're trying to get your first couples camp or something like that, I think this would be a cute little thing. I also like rear kitchens for destination use. If you're like, yeah, we're gonna go seasonal, I'm tired of hauling around this little trailer or whatever, this would be a great little trailer just to park somewhere Pop the slide open when you get there, close it when you leave. No nonsense. It'd give you a good weekend away, a little sort of destination cabin kind of feel. So, give our team here at Halo RV Brokers a call because uh, we have the largest selection of used RVs in all of Michigan at uh, between Halo RV and Halo RV Brokers. So whether it's big diesel pushers or your little hybrid campers even, we got a little bit of everything out here right now. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet Camping, everybody.